In one of my previous videos, a viewer commented that I had some sort of smudge on my glass, and I've got no idea what they were on about. But on second thoughts, maybe they were right. I would much rather one of you tell me in the comments section if something needs fixing in one of my videos than not saying anything at all. But I can see clearly now, and the product I can see clearly is sitting over here on my desk. This is the new Drobo 5DT. And the T stands for turbo. So it's like a 5D, but it's already got the M SATA drive installed to enhance performance. 128 gigabyte version installed in the base of the device. It's also got this magnetic front cover, which not only reveals the LED status symbols just here, but it also reveals the five three and a half inch bays. Now you can install three and a half inch serial ATA drives in here, or indeed two and a half inch SSDs. Around the back, this is where we can see the input for the power supply, which is included in the box, the main power on off switch, the USB 3 connection, again, the cable is supplied inside the box. And we also got two Thunderbolt 2 connections, one's going to your computer and one's a daisy chain to other devices. Again, the Thunderbolt cable is supplied inside the box. If we look on the bottom of the unit, we can see a catch here. If we pull this up, it releases this trapdoor and this reveals the pre-installed 128 gigabyte M SATA drive. This is going to enhance the performance of the Drobo device. Now for maximum data performance, something like doing video editing direct onto the Drobo, I would be installing solid state drives in every single bay. But the beauty of the Drobo system is that you can also mix and match different capacity hard drives from different manufacturers and build up that storage capacity as and when you buy new hard drives. They don't all have to be the same, so I've purposely selected a nice selection for this initial installation video. We've got a Seagate Barracuda XT 2TB hard drive. Next up, we've got a Western Digital Green 2TB hard drive. And then last but not least, I've got not one, but two Seagate NAS hard drives, both 3TB each. Now to install each of these hard drives, it's a simple matter of pushing each one of them into a drive bay, and making sure that the connector locates correctly, and also this retaining lever snaps into place. Now again, I've installed four drives in here. You don't have to install four or five from the offset. You can in fact just install a minimum of two hard drives to get everything up and running. So now I'm gonna switch on the Drobo for the first time. I'm gonna purposely leave the cover off so that you can see all of the LEDs. So now we're going to switch over to the desktop view so that you can see the Drobo dashboard application. Now, this is the application you have to install to enable you to set up your Drobo device for the first time. So here we go, now you can see we have got uh, an icon in the middle here saying it's found our Drobo 5D. So if we click on this, it gives us an op option of looking at status, where it tells us it's upgrading the latest firmware on the device. So this is why there's a little bit of a delay on first turning on the unit. So we'll wait for this firmware update to complete and then we'll come back to the Drobo dashboard to actually do the initial setup procedure. Okay, so during that first startup of the Drobo 5DT, it didn't like the combination of the mix of hard drives I'd initially installed. So I've removed the Western Digital Green and I've also removed the Seagate Barracuda XT and I'll try reintroducing these hard drives after the initial setup. So let's switch back over to the desktop view. We'll go on to all Drobos. You can see now it's got a green light on here on the dashboard. Also, you'll see that the actual Drobo unit inset on your screen has got a green light next to each hard drive. If I double click on this, it gives me some system information. Uh, we can also go down to capacity we can also look at volumes, we can also look at tools, and we can also look at Drobo settings. Now, in tools, I'm going to actually set this up for the first time. So we're gonna format the hard drives. Now, this hasn't been done yet, so the drives aren't ready to accept data. So let's click on format. We're gonna use HFS Plus, so it's got Mac support. We click next. 
volume name, we're going to actually call it Drobo 5 DT, so I know exactly which one it is, and we will click next. And the maximum volume size is 64 terabytes. That's not what we're going to end up with as actual available capacity on this particular drive. We've got two three terabyte drives in here at the moment. So we click on format and it says this could take up to five minutes to complete. Okay, so that actually only took about a minute and a half to format the two hard drives. So it's now ready to use. So I'm gonna click on okay. Uh, we've also got some other operations we can do here. We can turn the uh, blink lights on. Let's see what happens when I click that. It says the lights will blink continuously for 15 minutes. If you would like to stop the lights from blinking, you can do so again using the same button. So it's just going to blink all the lights. Uh, not sure why you'd want to use that, but we'll turn that off again. So we can also rename the Drobo format, which you've just seen. We can do a reset, check for updates, which I've already done. So the firmware is up to date on here. Uh, we've also got some Drobo settings here as well. So Drobo name is currently set to Drobo. I'm going to set that to 5DT as well. We can also um, do disk drive spin down, so it spins down the disks for power saving. And we can also dim the lights. So I'm going to move this slider along to perhaps number six. Well, let's go number five, and then we click OK. And it just makes the lights dimmer on the actual unit. We've also got some status information here. So let's take a bit more of a closer look at this. So this shows us the name of the Drobo, the serial number, the health, firmware, uh, hot data cache is on, interface that it's using is Thunderbolt 2. Uh, we can also click on here and it tell us drive information. So what's in bay one, uh, what's in, sorry, what's in bay zero at the top, and what's in bay one. We can also go down to performance and this just gives us some uh, performance tests and it'll give us some feedback just here with regard to read throughput and write throughput. I assume that it's testing this in the background. I can't see a, like a stop or start button anywhere. So I would assume that it's testing that in the background and maybe it'll populate these figures a little bit later on. It also tells us just here, of course, that we've got three terabytes in the two top bays and the MSATA accelerator bay is active. So it's got that uh, MSATA drive pre-installed. Capacity is just that. It's telling us that we've got uh, 2.61 terabytes total data capacity. And that's because it's reserving data capacity on both drives. So if one drive fails, we've still got the, the original data here, or of course we've got a mirror. And as we add more drives, it does some, some special uh, type of data redundancy. So that if one or more drive fails, then of course we've still got our original data. And you can select how it uses that as well. You can select different amounts of data redundancy. We've also, also got usage here as well. And again, this explains it a bit better than I previously did. So we've got three terabytes plus three terabytes. So six terabytes of hard drive installed. 2.61 terabytes is available for data. Zero bytes on that first drive is reserved for expansion. And then on the second drive, 2.83 terabytes is used for protection and then there's a 4.77 gigabyte overhead on there as well. We'd also just skip down to volumes. This shows us the volumes we've got created. We've got an accessible uh, icon here that we can double click on to gain access to the data on the drives. If we move down, we've got tools, which I've already showed you, and then of course Drobo settings again. We've also got some dashboard preferences here as well. Uh, within here, we can uh, enable automatic updates. We can also show visual alerts. We can enable email alerts for if something goes wrong with one of the drives. We can also enable a menu bar application, which is currently located at the top here of my menu bar, allows me to access Drobo dashboard, hide alerts, about and exit. Okay, so there's a few more things I want to show you in this setup video. The first one is that I've just put back in the Western Digital Green hard drive into this third bay down, just to see if it would now allow me to add these two hard drives, this one here, the Seagate two terabyte, and the Western Digital one in after the initial setup procedure. So I've popped that in, green light has come on, which is good. 
If I go to volumes now, does it show me? Well, let's go to status and look at bay one and then bay two. So it shows this as being added. Uh, I'm not sure if it's still thinking about it. It's not come up with any sort of warning saying that I can't use that. Let's go back to status and go to system information. Let's try drive information again. It's saying that all of these bays are good to go. Let's have a look at capacity. So now it's shown we have a three terabyte plus a three terabyte plus a two terabyte, eight terabytes in total actually available to use. So that is quite surprising. I suppose because it's got no data on it, it's not having to move anything around to rebuild. So let's try reintroducing this fourth drive. Maybe this was the problem drive. So let's put this all the way in and we'll wait and see what happens with this one. We can hear it spinning, spinning up. We're hoping for a green light here. And then on the desktop, it says Drobo 5DT, uh, new drive detected. And on the actual dashboard just here, you can see it now says three terabytes, plus three, plus two, plus two. It shows us how it's using the data here as well. And you can see we've got all green light shown here. So it's now successfully working with that original combination of drives in. So that's really good news. Now, I did also want to show you an application being installed. But if we look at Drobo dashboard, on this left-hand panel just here, there's no option for apps. Maybe the Drobo 5DT doesn't support it. So moving on, the very last thing I want to show you in this video, and this is not going to be a very big performance on here. Let's just hide the Drobo dashboard as I've got Blackmagic Design's disk speed test. And just for fun, this isn't set up for speed performance at all. This is set up for capacity. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if I really wanted to set this up for maximum performance, all of these would be solid state drives. But just to see how it performs, let's test the write and read speeds. So we're clicking start. And that is really surprising. That peaked at over 200 megabytes per second and it's settled down to around about 180, 190 megabytes per second on the write speed. And on the read speed, we're averaging around about 180, 182 megabytes per second. And you can see second time round, it's doing a little bit faster on the write speeds, but settling down on both the read and write at around about 170, to 190 megabytes per second. A little bit erratic on the data throughput here, but that's probably because of the mix of drives, the particular setup I've got. Maybe if these were all of the same capacity, all the same performance, then that would be better. And of course, if all of these were solid state drives, this uh, performance would be considerably different. So that's it for this video. The Drobo 5DT is now up and running. It runs quite quietly, so I'm really pleased with that. The initial reaction to that mix of hard drives wasn't great. It didn't like them initially, but then reintroducing the drives after the initial setup seems to have solved that problem. So I've now got uh, the two three terabyte drives and the two two terabyte drives installed. The performance is more than enough for what I intend to use the Drobo for. And that's for things like photo backup, video file backup, and a few other types of files on here as well. Now, the noise it's producing is, again, more than acceptable. You can hear that fan working away, but it's not too loud. I have heard people say that Drobos are far too loud to have in their working environment. I think this is perfectly acceptable. The only disappointment I had was not being able to install the app on here. Maybe that was just my lack of research into whether it would be possible on the 5DT, but I'll let you know if that works in a future video. So if you do subscribe to the channel, I will be publishing another video about how the Drobo 5DT is fitted into my workflow, and that'll be online in about three, four weeks' time. So that's it for this video. For now, I will leave you with my closing thoughts, and that is this is a great system for backing up your data. The real beauty of it is, as I said earlier in this video, 
you don't have to install three terabyte drives in every single bay. You can mix and match different capacities. When I run out of capacity, I can buy a six terabyte drive, for example, put that into that fifth bay at the bottom there, and then I can gradually upgrade the other drives in here to a higher capacity. And all the time I'm doing this, my data is redundant as well, so I'm not gonna lose any data. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. Hit that like button, and I'll see you in another video very soon.